All right, so continuing on with our little series of explaining how some of my macros work, I figured I'd show you one called Page Turner uh, or Page Turner or Page Turner, just depending on how you want to say it. Uh, it's a macro that basically works with pages. Um, so for those who aren't really familiar, I'll go ahead and explain what the issue is. That way I kind of have a reason why it exists. So when you're working with pages in Corel, now I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my, my stuff here so that way you can kind of see what's going on. So if you look at the bottom left, you have page one. So this is just a basic untitled brand new document. And you can see we're down at the bottom is page one. And that's it. So I have one page of the document. This is the page and I, and I can make my shapes and work. Um, so going forward, when you want to add more pages, you, you hit these buttons here and it creates another page and you can see where it creates another tab. Great. And you can see where this bar just starts to fill up with your pages. Okay, fine. The problem is, is once you start to exceed the number of pages, then it becomes difficult to jump around on those pages. Now, if your document's only a few pages, and most of the time documents are, you know, especially in, in our shop, you know, they don't usually get too crazy. I started to find that once I started getting into big projects, I had a, I had a problem. It was very inefficient to jump around. So let me explain that. I'm going to go ahead and close this. So what I would do is I, I, I you know, you can see here, I, I name all of my pages because all of my pages, the names become the file name. So to me, it's very important to name these files or name these pages. The problem is, is the, the page name, even though it, it can only be 32 characters, I think for this reason, so it doesn't get too big, um, they quickly start to chew up this bar. So even though there's only seven total for this particular file, I'm fine. I don't need the page turner. You can use like over here, if you look on the bottom left, just like, you know, audio track skipping, you can hit these forward arrows or you can just skip all the way to page one, you can see there. Um, but once you start to get a lot of names and stuff, it becomes really big. So like if I shut this one off, and so this one I just did, if you look back a couple videos, I explained this was our, the, this monument sign. You can see where down in the bottom left here, it gives you the count. So I'm at one of 21 pages. Now I have files that are upwards of 50 pages. I usually don't like to get that big, but sometimes and I try to break them up into multiple documents and try to piece them out. But sometimes it's just not feasible. But you can see where because I've named all these pages, I only get a visual of up to nine pages here. So here's page two and I only get to page 10. And if you want the next page, you click it and it only gives you one more and it only gives you one more. So you can see where I'm going with this. So it got frustrating trying to leapfrog back and forth. So I created page turner. So what you do is you take your go time here for those playing along at home. You, if you go to the very right, it's the second one down. It's supposed to look like a book with a page turning. Um, you know, I created all these little icons on the fly. So I did my best, but, you know, it works pretty good. So if you kind of hover over it, it'll, it'll tell you what it is. So if you click it, it pops it up. There it is. So I like to put it up in the corner here. So what, I'd, what I usually have is I usually have my rectangular going. And that's when I'm producing, you know, this allows me to center things up, shuffle things. And this also lets me create all up here, lets me create rectangles on the fly. Um, so, but usually when I need page turner is when I start to export files. So I'll, I'll go ahead and switch from producer mode, creator mode, and I'll click that. And then I'll put page turner up here in the corner. And then this is for more laying out and jumping around. So let me explain. So like this, so usually when I'm making my files, I start from the very back and I bring in the original sketch. So this is the sketch I got from the designer. And so they give me some, some ideas, they tell me what they want, and this is it. And then I start to work what I call to the left. So you can add pages either to the left or to the right of this particular file. So I added another page to start getting my eye in to figure out. And then you can see I added another page to import our power supply box. And then this basically, I, I basically settle and I start to work and I start from here and I import this and then all the parts start to fly out, you know, in line. So everything's lined up. So when the document first starts and then what I do is I break out this page for the top hats. So if you look, page 16 was page number one at one point and this was page two. No problem. The problem becomes at that point, you can see I have 15 other pages now. 
So page turner comes good when it's time to start breaking out all the files. So you might not use page turner when you only have five or six pages because you can easily jump around no problem. But once you start to have to go all the way back to page number one, and then you have to get yourself all the way back to page 16, and then you got to get all the way back to page, you know, you can see. So page turner, get it out. It's right here. I put it up in the corner. And then, so the way page turner, the, the, the VBAs, the macros, um, it's fortunate, unfortunate. Because they try to be simple and they try to be safe, they don't, they're just one and done. So when you push the button, it executes the code and then it shuts off. And that's kind of built for simplicity. It's kind of built for, you know, whereas like your phone or your computer is always listening, it's always waiting for you to do something. But with the macros, it's one and done. So it's like, it's like, you know, using crank windows, it's steam powered, it's not slick, it's not fun. So you have to update the page list of all of the names uh, when you go to use it. Now, if you add another page, it's not going to know. You have to hit refresh. So you got to kind of just always just give it a little bit of love. Um, and then it'll, re you know, if you add another page, it'll add it to this. If you don't add a page, if you don't hit refresh, then it, this won't match. So when you go to, when you go up here, when it says, you know, top hats, 063 top hats, and this won't be page one, it could throw an error or it'll take you to the wrong page. And you might be like, oh, what's going on? Well, it's just because you got to make sure you kind of get in the habit of just making sure you refresh the list anytime you make a change. Um, but as long as you don't change and this doesn't change, you're fine. If you're working like right now, it's, it's, you know, this isn't going to change unless I add something anyway. So. What you do is just hit refresh, you hit the pull down menu, and then this allows you to find by name all the different, so you might use, you, you remember uh, page 16 was top hats, you click it and it'll take you right there, just that easy. Um, and then you go back to page one and there you go. Now, if you look just below refresh, this didn't exist. So this was like, just, that was enough for me. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I can go back to here and then I can go back to page 16. Um, what my hopping back and forth becomes is when I make the file, so I'm done. I've, I've made all these parts and they're ready to go. I have the face ready. I have all these parts ready. I have all this ready to go. I'm like, whoo, okay, now we're switching modes. Now what I do is I take my name, my name, um, my name gig here. And I start to just, I start to look around here and I start to name a page for everything that I see. So I start from here and it will be, you know, page, page 16 will be, will be page one, then page page, you know, it'll be moved back and I'll start creating all these pages you see down here, one inch, the 063 white, white. And I keep naming, I keep naming and I, I create basically one through 15. You see uh, page 15 right here. Those will be all empty, ready to go. So I go from Top Hats page 16 here is, was, was my, that's where I had. I have these two pages ready to go. And then I, I create an entire list of empty pages ready to go that are all named awaiting their material. Then I just start this big copy paste party. I go through and as you can see with page one here, these are the 063 hats. So when I go back to page 16, so I would go through and grab this and I would like select all the stuff that's supposed to go onto page one. And I go through and I select it all and I get it ready. Then I hit my copy and then I can bounce back to page one, paste, and then it's just a big party of that. So I go back to page 16 and, or, I, or what I do is I go to page two, I look and this would be 090 top hat parts. So I go back to page 16, just that easy. And then I can select these were 090 parts. So I go through here, I go through here, and I go through here and I start selecting all this stuff. And then that makes it easy to jump back to page two. And then I go ahead and paste that in, get it ready. I look here, page three is main box center. So that's when I know I need to go to page 17. And I go find all the main box center pieces. I go here, I go here, I go here, and I go ahead and, you know, and it doesn't matter. I grab the junk, I grab all of it because I can, I, I clean it all out after. So it's very easy, but I, you know, I try to grab, I don't grab everything, but I can just, you know, select, select all this. Like I hit that, I hit that, I hit that. But then it makes it really easy to go to page three 
and then this would be blank and I can just paste it in there. And I'm not worried about, you know, I'm just loading these pages. They're all messy. They're not lined up like this. They have extra crud on them. That's all different process. But the page turner, you can see how easy that is as opposed to, you know, clicking through, clicking through, clicking through, clicking through. Anyway, so hit refresh list, you have your full list. Now you saw the jumping back and forth. That's when I created sticky return. So now instead of going to page one, and then dragging down to page 16, and then going back to page one, and then dragging down to page 16, you can see where I'm going with this. Sticky return doesn't have the names, but it has a list of the pages. So I know top hat is 16, so I'll just keep this at 16. That's what sticky return means. It just stays with 16. So now I can jump around and I can go here on the main list. I can go here, I can go here, but then if I hit this, it takes me back to 16. So this helps me jump back and forth, jump. So 17 is where it really helps because 16 only had, you know, a few parts here, a few parts here, we're done. But now 17 was like, you know, these get their own page. Um, these parts get their own page. These get their own page. These get their own page. So I'm going, you know, select copy. Um, those are backers. So I go here, I paste that and I go sticky return, boom. And then uh, I'm gonna grab the jigs and I'm gonna fill that page. So I go here, I find my jigs, boom. I copy, pay, I paste that in, sticky return. I'm back to page 17. Um, then I find other parts, you know, like, oh, let's, uh, we're doing skins. You know, these are the skins, um, faces, but we call them skins um, with, with three Zs, by the way. Um, you can capitalize the Zs if you want. Uh, so then I'll just go find skins here, boom. And then I'd paste that in, sticky return. So anyway, that's how page turner works. It's very simple, um, but uh, especially when you get into very large files. Uh, but anyway, like I say, you just gotta be kind of vigilant about um, hitting the refresh button on your own and making sure it's up to date that page turner sees what's on the document. So anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, hit me up.